very warm welcome to each of you gathered here this evening for this very special service of thanksgiving for the ministry of Lakshmi Fernando, who has served as the General Secretary of the Ceylon Bible Society for 15 years, from 2002 to 2017. Um, for a good part of this 15 years, she has managed to rope me into some of the events as well. Uh, and so, so much so that sometimes people ask me what my affiliation to the Bible Society is. Now, while I am a life member, uh, I don't hesitate to point out that I come here year after year when she calls me because I cannot very well say no to Miss Fernando, as I call her, because she has been my teacher as well. Now, for those of you who've managed to have um, a glance at the program of um, the Order of Service, you would have noticed that there are three hymns which happen to be the school hymns of three leading girls' schools in our country. Uh, and the first school, I'm proud to say, of which I am a past pupil, is where I have uh, known Miss Fernando as well. And in fact, the very first hymn we will be singing as the choir is gathered here as well is the school hymn of Methodist College. Now, Miss Fernando has served at Methodist College from 1986 to 2001. She has taught social science, so, social studies, uh, Christianity, logic, and political science. She has also been the warden of the hostel from 1985 the chaplain from 1992, and the vice principal of our school from 1996. She, is also, she was also the vice president of the Methodist Church from 1997. So her involvement in the school has been a very intimate one, and it is indeed uh, as an honor to her that the choirs of these schools are here as well. I invite all of you to please stand and join us in singing the school hymn, a very apt one, which gives thanks to God for all that he has blessed us with. The hymn on page one, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven.
That was the school choir of Methodist College joining us to sing Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. I now call upon Mr. Sriyanta Sena Ratna, the president of the Ceylon Bible Society, for the prayer and welcome. Let us maintain a moment of silence, remembering that we are in the presence of our Lord, We have come together in the name of our Lord to offer praise and thanksgiving for his unfailing goodness to the Ceylon Bible Society and also to bid farewell to our much loved and admired General Secretary Lakshani who will be retiring after 15 years of dedicated service towards the dissemination of your word throughout the length and breadth of our land. We praise and thank you, O Lord, for the momentous journey of Lakshani, and we entrust her into your loving care knowing that you are always a faithful traveler and companion on her way. Shelter her and protect her from all harm and may the future be a source of many enriching moments for Lakshani and her family. We place our trust in you, O Lord. We know that every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We pray all this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Right Reverend Diloraj Kanagasabe, Bishop of Colombo, patron of the Ceylon Bible Society. Reverend Arun Nep, Minister, Resources Facilitator of the United Bible Society. Reverend Dr. Emmanuel Fernando, Auxiliary Bishop of Colombo and Bishop-elect of Mana, Vice President of the Ceylon Bible Society. Members of the General Council, Life Governors, members of the Bible Society, dear friends, On behalf of the Ceylon Bible Society, it is with pleasure and a sense of sadness that I welcome you this evening to this service to bid farewell to our dynamic General Secretary, Lakshani Fernando. An occasion like this is always fraught with emotion. With the impending departure of a well-loved and admired General Secretary. But at the same time, it is an occasion that we give thanks to our Lord for having given the Bible Society the services of such a dynamic personality. When I personally look back over the last 15 years, to me the most exceptional contribution that Lakshani has made 
not only to the life of the Bible Society, but also to the church at large, has been her success in breaking through all divisions in our church and establishing contact with every different strand of our Christian faith. She was successful in maintaining very strong personal connections with individuals and with churches of our various denominations and forged strong personal ties with them. When our general council meets once a month, as our general council members would know, it is truly a wonderful and marvelous gathering of every denomination of our faith meeting together and discussing the vision and the mission of the Bible Society. And at the same time, strengthening immeasurably our march towards ultimately a united church. I believe that when we look back on her time at the Bible Society, this significant factor will forever stand out as her exceptional contribution towards the work of the Bible Society and also of our church in Sri Lanka. When I also look at the manner in which Lakshani handled the internal affairs of the Bible Society, once again, her distinctive leadership style stands out. Immediately she took office, she overhauled the accounts department, appointed professional accountants, and ensured that the monthly accounts and the annual accounts were presented to the council in a timely manner. In fact, the entire management system of the society was totally overhauled, and she leaves behind today a highly professionalized organization. That is to her credit. The general council meetings were conducted with precision. As members of the council will recall, when each separate item of the agenda comes up, she would merely say, please look at the blue papers in your file. Or if the next item comes out, look at the yellow papers in your file. And will thereafter make a very concise, brief statement on each of the items. She was in total command of the work of the society. Lakshani was one who foresaw very early that funds for the various programs conducted by the Bible Society, which was almost at the beginning supported by overseas funds, would ultimately dry up. And she took early steps to ensure that every inch of space in the building would be put to maximum retail use by renting out the same and thus raise the much needed funds for the day-to-day -day operations of the society. As a result, for the last two years, our Bible Society has been almost able to fund all its activities through its own resources. In fact, I believe we are one of the very few Bible societies in this region who are not entirely dependent on outside funds. Her legacy concerning the staff of the society, too, would live for a long time to come for the future. Lakshani ensured that every member of the staff was professionally qualified. Some were sent abroad for training, while some were trained locally, utilizing the vast training resources of the United Bible Society. Today, 
she leaves the society with a highly trained staff, which is comparable to any other well-funded Bible society anywhere in the world. She brought to her work a deep commitment, meticulous attention to detail, and a passionate desire to serve without any regard for her personal comforts. There is no corner of our land that she, together with the members of her staff, have not missed it and made a reality of the mission of the Bible Society to translate, to publish, and disseminate the word of God every corner of our beloved land. Truly, she could with St. Paul say, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. We shall miss her services deeply. On behalf of the General Council and the members of our society, I thank you, Lakshani, for all that you have accomplished during the last 15 dynamic years, and I wish you and your family God's choicest blessings for the future. I close these remarks with an ancient Celtic blessing. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warmly on your face. May the rain fall softly upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hands. Thank you, Lakshadi, for all you have done for the Bible Society. <laughs> අනකල සියලු නීති අනුව ක්‍රියා කිරීමට බලා ගන්නා ලෙස ශක්තිමත් වද ධෛර්යවත් වද සිටින්න. නුඹ යන යන සෑම තැනදීම නුඹට සුබ සුබ සිද්ධ වන පිණිස එම නීතිය අකුරටම පිළිපදින්න. මේ නීති සංග්‍රහය නුඹ නිතරම කියවිය යුතුය. එහි ලියා තිබෙන සියල්ල අනුව ක්‍රියා කරන පිණිස ඒ ගැන දිවාරය දෙක්කි භාවනා කළ යුතුය. එවිට නුඹ කරන දේ සපල වී නුඹට සුබ සිද්ධිය සැලසෙනු ඇත. Shakti Matu, the Hirevata City Matada, Bia Novi Matada, Nukalabi Matada, Manubata Anakala Noved, Manda, Nubayana Sam at Anakama, Nube Devisamidana and Vahanse, Nuba Samaga Vedasit Naseka. Deva Vake say. I now have the pleasure of calling upon the most reverend Dr. Emmanuel Fernando, who is the Auxiliary Bishop of Colombo and the first Vice President of the Ceylon Bible Society, for his address. Right, Reverend. Bishop Duloraj Kanagasabe, the patron of the Bible Society, Mr. Sriyanta Senaratna, the president of the Bible Society, and Mr. Arun from the UBS, Mrs. Lakshani Fernando the outgoing General Secretary of the Bible Society, and uh, Reverend Priyanta Vijay Singh, the newly elected General Secretary, Reverend members of the clergy, dear Reverend fathers, and my dear friends, it is indeed with great joy that I thank and praise the Lord for the human service rendered by Mrs. Lakshani Fernando as the General Secretary of the Ceylon Bible Society during the past 15 years from 2002 to 2017. With Psalm number 106, verse 1, we could gladly say, praise the Lord, or give thanks to the Lord, he is good. 
for his steadfast love endures forever. I'm sure throughout these years of ministry in the Bible Society, Akshani has experienced the guiding hand of God in all her endeavors. As one of the vice presidents of the General Council of the Bible Society in Sri Lanka, I have had the privilege on several occasions to interact with her. I have much admiration for her intelligent, versatile, committed, dedicated, and vibrant ministry as the General Secretary. In the midst of the challenging times, she has persevered through her well-founded confidence in God's love and care to face natural calamities, war and conflict, financial need, and instances of lack of support for the Bible Society in Sri Lanka. She has been very conscious of the deep commitment and faithfulness of all those who have gone before her and understanding the great responsibility placed on her has made a colossal contribution to the Bible Society. United in God's Word is the precious motto of the Bible Society and with that, as her vision, she has served relentlessly with God's talents and skills bestowed on her to have the many churches in Sri Lanka to be united in the cause of the Bible. The Roman Catholic Church, which I represent, has been given an important role to play in the general organization of the Bible Society, be it in the distribution of the Bibles to the Catholic parishes in different parts of the country, be it in the work of the new translation of the Bible into Singhala, be it in the organization of the common Bible that the Roman Catholics could use, she has worked very closely with the bishops and the different members of clergy having various responsibilities in the Catholic Church. With the God-given talent to handle many things at the same time, she has organized a variety of programs with the different churches, her quiet leadership in ministry has made the churches in Sri Lanka to be united by the living word of God. With the background she has had as a practicing lawyer for a few years and then as warden and chaplain of the hostel and the vice principal of the Methodist College, she has brought a unique and very significant contribution to the Bible Society. And then, as the first woman general secretary of the Bible Society, she has brought very high standards and a distinguished honor to the society. Under her very capable leadership, the society celebrated its 200th anniversary in the year 2012, giving due place to the word of God and touching the lives of many thousands of people. As we have a sense of sadness that she is leaving the Bible Society as a general secretary, we offer our heartfelt thanks to Mrs. Lakshani Fernando for all the different events and products related to the Bible that she was able to organize during her tenure of office as the General Secretary for the past 15 years. And we have participated in the festival of choirs and Lenten meditations and various programs that has really brought the word of God to people. May the gracious Lord bless her 
and the members of her family abundantly with his choicest blessings in the years to come. Thank you. That was the Most Reverend Dr. Emmanuel Fernando. And indeed, as was pointed out, a time when we bid farewell is always a time of sadness because um, we miss all the good memories that were made, but it is also, I believe, a time of blessing because we look at the many talents that have been put to good use, God-given talents. And here we have with us the Ladies' College Choir joining us to sing their school hymn. Now, just to put things in context, Mrs. Lakshani Fernando was a student of Ladies' College from 1967 to 1969. And later on, she went there to teach from 1978 to 1982. And while she was a teacher there, she was married in 1981. So here we have the choir lined up to sing with us. So please stand to join us in singing uh, the hymn on page number two, Our Father by Whose Servants. Please stand, page number two. Choir of Ladies College. I now call upon Mrs. Vasanthi Rajaratnam, the life governor of the Ceylon Bible Society, for her address. It gives me great joy to speak of Lakshani Fernando's excellent work done during the past 15 years as the general secretary of the Ceylon Bible Society. She came in as the first woman general secretary of the Ceylon Bible Society. She brought in the skills acquired as a lawyer, teacher, vice principal, chaplain, 
Vice President of the Middle East Conference, many posts held in National Christian Council, daughter, sister, wife, and mother. I have been associated with the Ceylon Bible Society in different positions for the past 30 years and was able to observe her contribution, which transformed Ceylon Bible Society during these 15 years when she served as the General Secretary. As soon as she assumed duties, she requested for a systems audit to be done, which revealed the state of the CBS. Thereafter, fast-moving items which were in great demand were ordered. New avenues for printing the Bible was established. There were challenges right from the beginning which she had to face during her time in office. Pramukha Bank crashed and the staff retirement funds that were invested there had to be credited to that fund. Managing the new building with tenants and paying back the loans and maintaining the premises had to be done properly. The United Bible Society's funding reforms from annual contributions to the CBS to project-based funding had to be tackled wisely. The country went through tsunami in December 2004 and end of war in 2009, and many believers and churches losing their Bibles. They had to be catered to. The 200th anniversary celebrations of the CBS was during her tenure, and a great celebration was organized and held to give glory to God. Right from the beginning, she started regular staff meetings, during which time work was allocated to members of the staff. They also listened to each other's concerns and ideas, which bound them together. Every year was allocated for a special segment of the community, and the programs and publications were done to empower and strengthen that sector. Her next step was to appoint regional coordinators to take the productions and programs to different regions in Sri Lanka. The work of the CBS was taken to all over Sri Lanka. Services were held in different areas where all the churches in that region participated. CBS is the only organization that brings all denominations of Christians together. She brought in members from different denominations to the General Council so that they could participate in the work of the CBS. Lakshani visited all the heads of churches periodically and informed them of the work that was going on and also listened to their ideas, suggestions, and needs. This enabled her to guide the productions and distribution. During the year that was allocated to the differently abled, she invited a differently abled person to serve on the general council. Young differently abled people were recruited to the staff and they were encouraged to contribute to the work of the CBS through the special skills that, were, that they possessed. This enabled them to gain confidence in themselves in a loving and caring environment. Faith Comes by Hearing program was initiated, and it was a great program to take the word of God to people who could not read. Sign language directory developed for the people who could not hear was a great blessing to many. The Braille Bible for the children were greatly appreciated by the children who could not who did not have vision. Creative Bible studies were held in different regions, and this encouraged many to participate and experience the Word of God in an interesting and interactive manner. She raised funds from her friends and contacts abroad for special programs such as Festival of Songs, Speech Contests, Creative Bible Studies, etc. Lakshani was responsible in establishing a regional center in Bandarwala on a rented property 
for a few years, which provided a base to take the programs to that region. Realizing how regional work was important, she purchased a 33 perch property in Gaul and built a center where seminars and training programs could be held. It also has accommodation for participants when programs are held for a few days. Bookshops were established in Morotua, Kandy, Kandana, and Jaffna. In 2013, Healing the Wounds of Trauma Facilitators Training Program was established, and many were trained to serve in different areas of our country. She was a caring boss, balancing loving care and discipline of the workforce. She had a special talent to spot capabilities in young people and train them to become confident. Sorry. To take on responsibilities. She encouraged them to use their talents and serve God through their work. She managed to secure a 28 perch property in Morotua for half the value and built two houses for two of the staff members who have benefited by living in a place of their own and paying on easy payment schedule. Lakshani's personal talent in flower arrangements were put to use at all the CBS functions and admired by many. She had excellent relationship with the five presidents of the CBS and also the general council members during her tenure. I personally enjoyed meeting up with her for discussions and praying together in her room for the challenges and needs of the society. Her talents and contributions, suggestions and ideas were greatly appreciated and recognized by the officers of the United Bible Society. And first, she was appointed to the area board of the Asia Pacific Committee and later invited to serve on the United Bible Society Global Council. There are many more programs established by her, but due to time constraints, I have not spoken of them. Though she is leaving the Ceylon Bible Society, she will have many opportunities to enrich the work of the kingdom for many more years. When she took over 15 years ago, she was a wife and mother, and she is leaving as wife, mother, and mother in love a much better way to describe the relationship than mother-in-law. We wish her more relationships in the future. May God bless Lakshani as she goes into the new area of service to the Lord. Thank you. I also would like to say that today is uh, Hillary and Lakshani's wedding anniversary. So we thank God for their life together. May God bless them many more years together. That was Mrs. Vasanthi Rajaratnam, the life governor of the Ceylon Bible Society. There will now be a Bible reading in Tamil by Mrs. Subadashani John. Veda Vasipu, Sangeetam Irvati Mundra Madhikaram. Karthar in Maypara Irikrar, Nan Talchi Adayen. Our in a Pulula Idangalil Maythu, Amar in the Tanir Halandail, in a Kondupoi Vidikrar. Our in Atumave Tetri, Tamudia Namathi Nimitam, in a Nidhi in Padhalil Nadatagrar. Nan Marana Irulin Palatakil and Adandalum, Pulla Puku Paipadain. Dervarir in no de Kuda Irikrir. Umadukolum, Umadithadium in a Tetum. In Satrukaluk Munbaha, near in a Korupandi Ayatha Padithi, in Thalay Inia Labishagam Pandhirir, in Pathram Nirambi Valihirade, in Chivanulla Nalella, Nanmayum Kurubayum in a Thodarum, Nan Karthurudi a Vitile, Nidit the Nadkalai Nilai Thiripin. Amen. I now have the pleasure of calling upon Reverend Ar Arun Soknep, who is Ministry Resource Facilitator and Team Leader Asia Pacific of the United Bible Society's Global Mission Team. Mr. President and uh, Most Reverend Dr. Emmanuel, uh, Vice President, 
and board members and cleric, clergy members and me for her 15 years service with the Salon Bible Society. We are proud to have Salon Bible Society as one of our dynamic members within Asia Pacific. And thank you for all you have done, Lakshani. You come at the right time because uh, UBS has gone through uh, a, a transition, a change during many years. And I think Silent Bible Society is under uh, Lakshani's uh, leadership has uh, built up itself as one of the strongest uh, society in, in our region. And I would also like to thank you for being part uh, to your contribution to the, the Bible work in Asia Pacific, at first as the area board members and then later on as uh, uh, the global board members. So your contribution uh, has, uh, has been uh, very valuable, valuable for us. <clears throat> now, personally, I have been involved with the Salem Bible Societies uh, since uh, 2004, 2005 as a program consultant. And the way that the staff uh, development that, that Lakshmi push has made Silent Bible Society, you have a very good staff team that is I'm very thankful. And they always want to learn. Uh, that is uh, something uh, uh, good for their, their, their capacity building. And the last few years for me, it's uh, been a privilege to work with Lakshmi setting up several uh, affinity group in our region, uh, namely Asia uh, Affinity Alliance, which regroup all the Bible society in Asia Pacific. And last year, we, 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 we set up something that I can see, I can see the big thing will come from that, that group we call Asia Pacific uh, Catholic Affinity Group that we seek uh, to serve the Catholic audience. So I, while working with you, I came to appreciate your leadership. And when I, I remember, I think I will remember you as um, a quiet, soft, uh, softer spoken ladies, but dynamic one. You are very dynamic in the way you, you lead the Bible society. So as you embrace a new season of your life, I pray that the Lord will be with you so that you continue to be servant of, the, of God's word and the servant of the church and let the light of Christ in you continue to shine uh, for the sake of, of the kingdom of God. So God bless you and the Lord be with you, Lakshani. Thank you. We will now have a daughter of a member of staff Tirsha Edri Surya, who will speak a few words of appreciation. I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. First and foremost, I would like to thank the good Lord and then the CBS staff for giving me this opportunity to speak a few words. When I first stepped into the Bible Society, I was only five years old, and now I'm 17 years old. The first day I met Lakshmi Nandi, she wanted to know my name. And once getting to know my name, she requested me to call her Lakshmi Nandi. She loved me and cared for me as a mother. And when she went out, she requested me to accompany her whenever possible. I loved to accompany her, and my habit was to hold on to her sari fall. She reserved a small space in her office room for me to play. Whenever we found a little free time, we played the bubble shoot game in her computer. The staff of the CBS was so very kind and loved me. They treated me as a member of their family. I have pleasant memories of Lakshini Nandi, which I will never forget. I would like to mention one incident. One day, 
When we were about to leave after office, Ammi scolded me for a small mistake I did. And she said that she's going to tell that to my Tati. I was so upset about it. Then Ammi noticed, sorry. Uh, I got so upset about this. She started, to lo she started looking for me high and low. And uh, she thought that I was kidnapped. Then Ami noticed that something was moving under her table, and that makes me faster asleep. And <laughs> even now, when I meet Lakshmi Nandi, she reminds me about this incident. Lakshmi Nandi was so concerned not only about the staff, but also about the families of the staff. She is so caring about the problems of the families, educational needs, and also regarding any other problem. Thank you for implementing the educational plan and the insurance plan for the children and the staff. And I thank you for giving opportunity for us to take part in many programs. Thank you so much once again for giving your support for me and my parents to have a house of our own. And uh, we are very grateful to you. I will fail in my duty if I do not tell anything about Uncle Hillary. Whenever he sees me, he teases me and tell me that I'm very short. But Uncle Hillary, I would like to tell you that I'm tall. Finally, Lakshini Nandi, I would like to thank you for all what you have done for me and my family and the good advice, guidance, and encouragement given to me. We will miss you so much. Every blessing to you and your family in future years. Thank you. What lovely words of appreciation. It's time now for the Ceylon Bible Society to show their appreciation. And the staff will now have, um, perform a special item. Uh, it's, it'll be a song. This is the staff of the Ceylon Bible Society.
We will now have a Bible reading in English by Mrs. Shirani Samaranayaka. Bible reading is taken from Proverbs chapter 31, verses 25 to 31. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her happy, her husband too, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a share in the fruit of her hands, and let her works praise her in the city gates. Amen. I now call upon the Right Reverend Dila Raj Kanagasabe, the Bishop of Colombo and the patron of the Ceylon Bible Society, for his address. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As I see heads of churches, bishops, senior pastors, and all those who have been engaged in the Bible ministry gathered here in this house of prayer, Lakshani, this tells us something. Your work has been appreciated, admired, and we have been blessed by your leadership in this island nation of ours. I have been telling this, and as long as God's breath remains in my body, I will continue to say that. What the churches could not achieve, the Bible Society has achieved. Bringing Roman Catholics, Anglicans, Methodists, Baptists, Evangelical churches, all of them coming together, sitting side by side, working towards proclaiming God's word in this nation. Lakshani, as I look back and ask the question as to What things made you to be successful in this Bible ministry? I come to realize two things, and I thought I would share them today with you. Firstly, you not only labored for the Bible course, your belief 
and your dependency on God's living word, I believe went a long way for your success. Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones wrote this. Open quote. It is the combination of the spirit and the word. The spirit upon the word and the spirit in us as we read the word which makes the difference. We all know that you have been and you are a woman of prayer. And your dependency had been on God, the power of the Holy Spirit, waiting for instructions as you struggled within yourself to overcome many challenges that came your way. I'm sure Lakshani thinks it never would have been easy. Though you went around with a smiling face, I'm sure you would have had the difficult moments of leadership. And working with all churches, with different traditions, beliefs, doctrines, it would never would have been an easy task. I'm sure there would have been moments when you would have told yourself this is impossible. But the God in whom you trusted and the word on which you depended, God would have used that moment to tell you, my daughter, what is impossible with humankind is possible with God. Luke 18, 27. You would have said, I'm exhausted. I'm tired. But God, through this word, which has been precious to you, would have spoken to you saying, but those who want, I beg your pardon, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Isaiah 40, 31. There would have been moments when you would have experienced the absence of love. And you would have said, Nobody cares for me. Nobody loves me. But God, through his word, would have spoken to you, saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Jeremiah 31.3. You would have said, I simply can't go on like this. But God, through his word, would have spoken to you, saying, my daughter, my grace is sufficient for you. 2 Corinthians 12, 9. You would have said, I don't know what to do. But God would have strengthened you through his words saying, he shall direct your paths. Proverbs 3, 6. You would have said, I can't do this anymore. Bring to mind those memories. But God would have pointed you to this verse and strengthened you by saying, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians 4.13 You would have said, it's not worth it. But God would have said to you through the through St. Paul, the epistle 
to the Galatians 6.9. We will reap a harvest if we do not give up. You would have said, I can't forgive myself. Oh, I made a wrong decision. But God, through his word, would have strengthened you by saying, in Christ, God forgave you. Ephesians 4.32. You would have said, I can't make ends meet. As you began your ministry, I remember, as Mrs. Vasanthi Rajaratnam said, there were so many things that you had to sort out. And God's word in Philippians 4, 19 would have strengthened you by saying, God shall supply all your need. There would have been moments, Rakshani, when you would have said, I'm worried and I'm scared. But God would have strengthened you by pointing you to the word which says, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power. 2 Timothy 1.7 You would have said, I can't handle this anymore. But God would have pointed you to the scripture which says, cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. Psalm 55 verse 12, 22. You would have said, I wish I was shrewd enough and smart in handling this particular issue. But God would have shown you the verse which says, if anyone need wisdom, he should ask God first. God for it. James 1.5. You would have said, I am all alone in this matter. No one is supporting me. But speaking to you by his word, God would have said, my daughter, I will never leave you, nor forsake, forsake you. Hebrews 13.5. Carpenters, they work with wood. Potters will work with clay. Those dressmakers will work with cloth. But you had been privileged to work upon lives with God's living word. And I believe it is that which gave you the power that came from above to handle all situations and to stand here with a sense of completedness, knowing that you have done your part well. Billy Sunday said this, open quote, I stand on God's word. And if the book goes down, I will go with it. Today, let God's word settle matters in my life. Close quote. I stand on God's word. And if the book goes down, I'll go with it. Today, let God's word settle matters in my life. God used you as you allowed yourself to be soaked in his word and through that word it is a combination of God's spirit and the word, the spirit upon the word on your life and the word that made the difference in your life. 
that's the first point I want to share with you. Secondly, I'm reminded of the parable of the rich fool. We all know that in our ministries that we would like to see God's name increasing and our name decreasing. And Jesus at the end, the parable said, Luke chapter 12, verse 21, this is how it will be with anyone who stores up things for himself, but is not rich towards God. I believe, Lakshani, that your whole aim and purpose was to be rich towards God. We are all called to offer God our acts of service, which we all do. But my dear friends, the greatest gift that he, meaning God, desires most in our lives is us. Lakshani, I believe that you offered that unto God. And it is in appreciation of that dedicated ministry that the Anglican Church honored you as our chief guests, you and your husband Hillary, the recently concluded Diocesan Council. Reflect on Jesus' last conversation with his friend Peter. Peter was so human, he followed Jesus, learned from him, served him, doubted him, misunderstood him, praised him, and denied him. Yes, Jesus' final question to Peter was relational. Peter, do you love me? Three times he asked Peter that question. St. Augustine said this. All ethics could be summed up in this. Love God and do what you will. Love God and do what you will. Meaning, when you love God, you will always want to do what God loves. And that is exactly which gave you the freedom and the insight to move on working and accomplishing greater things for God's glory. Someone said, I can't make myself love God, but I can come to know him better. And because God is love, the more I come to know him, the more my love for him will grow. Thus, Lakshani, you became rich towards God. So today, as a patron of the Ceylon Bible Society, let me say thank you to you for the splendid ministry that you exercised, raising the bar to higher levels. And I'm hopeful that Reverend Priyanta, who is now going to take over from you, will continue from where you have left. 
bringing the whole church of God together before the Lord comes. God bless you. Thank you, Bishop Dilaraj Kanagasabe. Ms. Fernando, I think the fact that so many of us have gathered here this evening, despite knowing very well that the weather was going to turn out to be like this eventually, is a testament to the sort of impact that you have had on each of us. Um, so it is with great pleasure that I now invite you to speak a few words to us. The patron of the Ceylon Bible Society from its inception has been people of great eminence, but from the 1940s, we have had the Bishop of Colombo as the patron. And I would like to first thank his Lordship for the words that he said, because I had a feeling that he had kept notes during the many times that I have come to meet you because you said everything that had impacted me during these years, I'm sure you had kept some notes because you answered many of the things that had troubled me during these years. I used to make what I call quick appointments to meet the bishop. And sometimes some people have asked me, why don't you have a different system and have a roster and change the patron as the years go on. But I feel that we have made the correct choice in the Bible Society in having the Bishop of Colombo of the Anglican Church as our patron. Because when the Bible Society first started, it was the Anglican Church that gave leadership to the Bible Society in Sri Lanka, in Ceylon as it were. And I don't see Bishop Chikera, but I want to say a word of thanks to Bishop Chikera as well. Because in the first month that I took over as General Secretary, the finance manager of the time came and said, Ms. Fernando, there's a shipment that has come into the harbor. We have no money to clear it. And I did not know what to do. But I knew Bishop Chikera from long years when we had worked together in Peace and Reconciliation Ministry and I called him and I said, Bishop, this is the problem that I have. And he said, Lakshini, I can't take a decision. Please call me at 10 o'clock in the morning next, tomorrow. And I uh, knew if he did not give me a positive reply, I did not know what to do. When 10 o'clock came in the morning, I was too frightened to even phone the bishop. And then the phone rang. And it was Bishop Dulip who was calling me. And he said, Lakshini, why have you collected the check? It is ready for you. It is not the fact that that money was given to us, but the fact that he answered my call. And throughout these years, as the two bishops, they have really guided the work of the Bible Society through the General Secretary. And I know, I'm assured, that the bishop will give the same support to the incoming general secretary. And I hope Reverend Priyanta will appreciate the patron being there as a spiritual guide and companion. I also wish to thank all the presidents who were there for me. Mr. H.L. D. Silva, Mr. Douglas Vijay Singh, and Mrs. Vasanti Rajaratnam and Sriyanta Senaratna. I have troubled them quite a lot with all the things that I have to discuss. And I appreciate the fact that they gave me time. Vasanti always used to say, I will come and pray with you. So she used to come to my office and we used to pray together regarding the many things that we had to accomplish in the Bible Society. And Ms. Rachel De Silva, who was like me, a former vice president of the Methodist Church, we used to talk about many things, especially social issues in our country. And he helped me to focus my mind that we have to serve our nation. We have to serve our nation. And that was what he gave as his message to me. And during the 200th anniversary, I could not have done all the work that we did in the 
Bible Society without the guidance of Major Douglas Vijay Singh and Mrs. Raja Ratnam, who was the head of the organizing committee. We had 14 Thanksgiving services around the island, not one in the cathedral, but 14 in the regions. We had many activities so that the people realized that the work of the Bible Society was for them. It is their Bible Society, not something that is controlled by some staff members here in Colombo. It is their Bible Society. I also wish to thank all the former council members and the present council members for their advice and counsel always given so generously to the Bible Society and to the General Secretary. I also wish to convey through Reverend Arun Soknep my thanks to the staff of the United Bible Societies. I have worked with many General Secretaries and Director, uh, Director Generals of the UBS. I have worked in the uh, global board of the Bible Societies with many General Secretaries and heads of boards. And I have realized what a, a close relationship we have with the Bible Societies worldwide. So please convey my thanks to Mike and to all the staff of the Bible Societies. It has not been a very calm and cool relationship. Sometimes we have had rather hot discussions, but I know that the Bible Society movement, we go from strength to strength in the years to come in the world. I wish to thank the staff members, the former staff members, some of whom who read the Bible readings today. Shirani Samaranayaka was my personal assistant when I started, and I couldn't have done anything without her. And her knowledge of the churches, the leaders, the whole network, and Subhadarshini was a young girl at that time. And she was my translator when I went to Tamil-speaking areas. And she used to go with me to Jaffna, to Mana, to Trincomalee, the estate areas. And she used to translate my message to the people in those areas. And Sujata Madhukal was the uh, creative force that I was able to um, tap into the Bible Society. She was quite uh, advanced in age when one day I said, will you go to Thailand to the Asian Communications uh, Academy and learn to write teledrama scripts? I thought she would refuse because she had to be away for one month. But she said, Mrs. Fernando, I will go. And she studied and she qualified. And she has a certificate from the Asian Communications, Christian Communications Academy. So many people have supported. I cannot name all of them, but I thank you from the bottom of my heart for being such a supportive team in the Bible Society. The present staff, I cannot thank enough for all the work that they are doing. And I ask and I pray for forgiveness if I have sometimes been rather forceful in pushing them to do things that they think they couldn't do, but which I felt that they could do. So I hope and pray that they have learned much from the work that we have done in the past years. For me personally, I wish to say, as the bishop was saying, that I could not have done it except for the spiritual foundation that I received, firstly from my family. I am a descendant of three Methodist ministers and my husband of three other Methodist ministers who pioneered the work of the Christian church in our country. And the stories that were told by my grandmothers helped me and grounded me in the Bible. It is a, a story in my family that I was uh, put to sleep as a baby by my grandmother to the verse of the hymn, Shall We Gather at the River, which is not a lullaby, which is said at funerals, actually. <laughs> and she used to sing it in a different rhythm. She used to sing it like this, Shall we gather at the river? So even as a baby, I would not sleep 
if they did not sing it in the same rhythm. So I would say that the first memory that I have is of a hymn based on the fact that one day we have to cross the river. And then my parents, my father and my mother and my two sisters were here. We had a house of prayer in our home. We used to pray every day. My mother used to play the piano and we used to sing. And she used to practice even the hymns that should be told at her funeral. So we had to practice those as well. And my godfather was a Methodist minister. And uh, his son is now the president of the Methodist church. Theodore Pereira was my godfather. And so I was surrounded in my childhood by a very spiritual background. And I also wish to acknowledge the three schools that I have been attached to. The first was Girls High School Candy. And as you sang the hymn, I think the tune was not correct. We used to sing in another tune. Uh, it says, childhood shall learn to know thee and revere thee. And we learned to love the Lord, to acknowledge him as almighty. That is the motto of the school. God is almighty. And uh, the school really made us into what we are today. I did my elevus at uh, CMS Ladies College. And I would say that what I received there was the wings to fly. The wings to fly. Because I received confidence and courage to speak in public and to organize things and to do things well. And my house motto was, nothing less than the best. And we used to shout and shout, nothing less than the best. And that it got internalized. So even today, my house motto is there, nothing less than the best. And then I went to teach at Methodist College. The principal at the time was my aunt, Mrs. Shanti Piris. And when she asked me to join the staff, I could not say no. And there I learned to administer, uh, to look after people as chaplain, to do uh, various matters that were needed as a vice principal of the school. And in hindsight, I think it was a time of preparation for me to join the Bible Society. I never thought of joining the Bible Society. One day I was looking at a magazine and I saw an advertisement. This was in 1999. And it said that they were looking for a new general secretary for the Bible Society. I was not interested at all. But then just one line caught my eye. And it said, the Bible Society is a catalyst to bring the churches together. That stopped me. Because I was studying the Gospel of John at the time. And it says, who will believe us if we are not united? How can we witness to the world if we are not united? So I went and met the general secretary and I said, look, no women have been appointed as general secretary. Is it a policy that you don't appoint women? <laughs> and he said, no, women have never applied actually. So I thought I will apply and I applied and then uh, to my amazement, I was appointed as general secretary in 2002. I took on the task of being general secretary. As a bishop mentioned, it was not an easy task, but throughout that time, I was uh, totally and always guided by God. Because I have a motto in life. My birthday is the 25th of April. So my motto is Psalm 25, verse 4. Teach me your ways, O Lord, and show me your paths. And that has always been my motto. Teach me what you want me to do. Show me where I have to go. If any of you were at the induction service, I stated my motto for my term as general secretary, which was Joshua 1.9. Joshua 1.9, which was read to us. And it says, I command you, not I tell you, I request you, I command you to be courageous and confident and study the word of God night and day, and I will be with you wherever you go. And I stand and testify that that word is true. And as I end my term of office, I just want to 
uh, bring to your notice a, a sign that was given to the people of Israel. And I tried to show it. You know, somebody said I'm good at flower arrangements, so I tried to show it in these two things. I wonder whether anyone can guess the sign that I want to set before you. It is the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire that the people of Israel experienced. When they were going in the desert, it says in Exodus chapter 13 that during the day there was a pillar of cloud and in the night a pillar of fire. Every moment they were guided, day or night they were guided. The pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire. And God showed them the way. In the desert, you can't find the way. There are no roads, no signboards, nothing. And the people look at the stars and they try to find the way. But if you look at the way the Israelites went in the desert, they went south, they went north, they went west, east. They were totally confused. And the thing that guided them were the two pillars. And at one occasion, when the Egyptian armies were coming behind them and the Red Sea was in front of them, what happened to the pillars? What happened to the pillars? The pillar moved to the back of the people of Israel and stood between the Egyptian army and the people of Israel. And from the cloud onto the Israelite side came light and to the other side darkness. And I have experienced this many, many times in these years that God protects us. God protects us in impossible ways. We think it is impossible, but he will protect us. Give us light. Give us light to protect us. And when I look back in the years that uh, I have been the general secretary, I think the most important thing was that I was given the God-given opportunity of leading the Bible Society into a new millennium, a new century, and to celebrate the 200th anniversary of the Bible Society. So I thank God that he had given me this opportunity of serving him in this time, in this time. When I was thinking of retiring, I went to his lordship and we prayed about it. And he told me, Lakshmi, don't worry. There's someone who has been chosen for this. We have only to discover the person. And so we started the, uh, the whole process. And sometimes uh, in the search committee, we were discouraged. We couldn't find anyone who could take over. And then the Lord provided us with an answer. We discovered who was to be the next general secretary. And the bishop advised me and said, Lakshini, see that it is a person of prayer. And he told me at the interview, please ask the person to pray because he had at attended some interviews when the people were asked to pray, they could not pray. So Lord Bishop, I want to assure you that we have found a man of prayer to take over as a general secretary. And I hope and pray that the leaders who are gathered here the bishops and all the heads of churches will give to Reverend Priyanta the same support that you gave to me. It is not an easy task, and I hope that you will, in a way, go out of your way to help the new general secretary in the first years of his period of office. And I hope and pray that he will be able to face the changes that are there in our nation in the years to come. Lastly, I would like this, to take this opportunity of thanking my family because they've had to suffer quite a lot of neglect when I was the general secretary of the Bible Society. Fortunately, my husband is uh, very good at looking after himself. So I was not asked to check the menus or things like that. He's a very self-sufficient person. Sometimes he eats food straight from the fridge. And my son, uh, I, I always wondered, because I served the church in very, very many capacities, 
whether he ever resented it. So recently I asked him, did you miss me? Did you resent the fact that I was not there for much of your life? And he did not even know what I was talking about because I think he realized that he had, uh, I, he had to share uh, me with God. One day when he was small, he came to me and said, whom do you love best? Whom do you love best? Now I know he asked trick questions. So I was thinking, is he asking whether I loved his father more than him? Then I said, why are you asking me? Then he said, you love Jesus first, me second, and Tati third. So I knew that he has got the correct order, and I thank Hirosh for being there, and also my daughter-in-law uh, for being my daughter-in-law. <laughs> because she looks very much like me. And when Hirosh was small, he said, I will marry someone just like you. And his prayers, I think, were answered, and her prayers were answered. So I'm very thankful. So I would like to close with the last words of Joshua. As I started with the first words, the last words of Joshua. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord forever. Thank you. There will now be a token of appreciation, and for the presentations, I would like to call upon Mr. Sriyanta Senaratna, the president of the Ceylon Bible Society, Mrs. Murdu Fernando, the second vice president, and Pastor Michael Desanaga, the head of the AOG in Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka, we want to express our token of appreciation, a, a presentation for the wider body of Christ, especially for the Singhala Bible, uh, which we partnered together with you, one of your last uh, uh, tasks to accomplish in this year was, within a matter of six months or six to eight months, uh, bringing a new revision to the ROV Bible, and uh, we deeply appreciate your courageous decision, innovative thinking. And you redefine excellence for the Bible society. And what I would like to say, just like the Bible says, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. You were able to make the Bible society become flesh and dwell among all the churches in Sri Lanka. So in, 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 in our deep appreciation and honor for your service, we want to present this token. Reverend David Beeling, one of our senior governors, We'll present this appreciation token now. Even as we thank, join together in thanking God for the many ways in which he has been able to use you in his service, uh, we also, uh, it is with great pleasure that I call upon Mrs. Manik Fernando now, who will sing to us a blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you, sung by Mrs. Manik Fernando.
beautifully sung by the beautiful daughter in love. And now, for the closing prayer and benediction, I call upon the Right Reverend Dilo Raj Kanagasabe. We all rise to our feet and look unto the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just want to praise your holy name for men and women whom you choose to work in your vineyard, to take forward your vision. Today, we celebrate your faithfulness to Lakshani and Hillary and their family right throughout these years of ministry. Lord, we bless the womb that conceived Lakshani. We bless her parents who were instrumental in bringing her into this world. We bless her partnership with her siblings, with Hillary, and with her son and daughter-in-law, and the family, the extended family. And Lord, her partnership with the entire Church of God here in this country. Thank you for filling our memory banks with beautiful memories of her life and ministry. And even as we give thanks to you, Lord, we give thanks to you for your faithfulness unto them in their married life, even as they keep their wedding anniversary today. We pray that your holy presence will hover around them, continue to move as a pillar of fire by night and pillar of cloud by day. Wherever they go, whatever they do, may we all be blessed. We also pray for Reverend Priyanta, even as he prayerfully prepares for his induction. And Lord, we know that you are the God who goes before us in the power of your spirit. And we know that nothing would touch us, Lord, that would not touch you first. And you will never give us more than what we can absorb or endure, for you know our capacities. We pray that in our weaknesses you will be our strength. In our loneliness, that you will be our companion and our friend. In all our doubts, be our hope, even beyond all our doubts. And whenever we are found fallen by the wayside, due to stress and strain of life, Lord, if it is necessary, carry us till we are strong enough to get down and walk beside you, holding your hands firmly. So, Father, thank you for your blessing upon the Ceylon Bible Society all these years. We come to be connected through your word, and may we be true to your word till we shall breathe our last year on earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Unto God's gracious mercy, benediction, providence, and guidance, we commit you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with you all, where especially with Lakshani and her family, and Priyanta, Reverend Priyanta and his family, and all of us, this night and forevermore. Amen. Amen.